If you're watching this video, you're either really bored, you think I'm hotter than Brad Pitt, or you want to improve your photography skills. Stay tuned, and after the break, I'll tell you the one very simple thing that you can do to dramatically improve the quality of your photographs. Hey gang, so if you're still watching, you clearly want to improve your skills as a photographer. Bravo! You know, it's not as hard as you may think. In fact, you're already doing at least one thing right learning all you can about photography on YouTube. I wish YouTube was around when I learned photography. Yeah, that was back in the dinosaur ages when there was no such thing as auto exposure, no autofocus, zoom lenses sucked, potato mashers weren't something you used in the kitchen, and all the photography books were about numbers and ratios with black and white pictures that were at least two decades old. It was horrible. New and young photographers today have incredible resources at their disposal. Yet there is one thing that I find people consistently don't do. Practice. Yes, practice. Now, for those of you that just want to be entertained or razzle-dazzled with cool photos, go ahead, click on one of these videos. I don't want to waste your time. Come back next week, I'll have a cool tutorial. If you're serious about improving, stick around for a few minutes because I think I can really help you out. You know, my travels teaching and lecturing, I meet lots of new photographers who are struggling with lighting or posing or camera techniques, and they're spending loads of money on workshops and website memberships and new gear that they think will help them to take better pictures. And yet they're still struggling. In fact, they're beginning to get stressed out because they're finding clients, but the quality of their work is not where they want it to be, or they can't find clients that will pay them real money to do the work. Does that sound like you? The first question I ask them is, when was the last time you took a picture? The overwhelming majority of the time, the person looks at me kind of oddly and then gives me an answer like, uh, last weekend when I shot a wedding. In other words, six days ago. And then I'll ask, well, what about the time before that? And then they tell me something that was like two weeks ago when I did an engagement portrait. Then I ask, how long have you been shooting in general? And I hear an answer that's usually less than two years. So the net result is that this person is actually not practicing, has very little experience with a camera, and is basically hoping to find people to pay them to practice and gain experience. You know, when we were kids, we all learned the phrase, practice makes perfect. That phrase has been around for ages, it's still around, and it won't go away anytime soon. The reason? It is sage advice. The best athletes are the best, not because of genetics, but because of a dedication to practice. The best musicians are the best, not because they were born with a talent, but because of practice. How did you learn to ride a bike? Practice. How did you learn to drive a car? Practice. I promise you the best photographers are the best, not because they were born with an extra creative gene in their DNA, but because of practice. Practice makes perfect. Being a skilled photographer is the same thing as being a skilled athlete. It doesn't just happen because you want it to. When I was 15 years old, I got my first motor drive from my very used Nikon F camera body. I had a Nikkor 200mm lens, and I desperately wanted to learn how to take great sports photographs in my high school. One of my early idols was Sports Illustrated photographer Neil Leifer. I would come home from school day after day and load a 36 exposure roll of black and white film. Now for those of you not around in the film days, you could buy film in 100 foot long bulk rolls and then use reloadable film cartridges to load your own rolls of film. I would walk down to the end of my street where there was a busier roadway and take a seat on the curb. Then I would practice follow focus as cars came up the road. My task? Keep the front passenger bumper in focus as the car approached and then passed. I'd do this for about 15 minutes, and then I'd put the roll of film in the camera, and I would shoot the entire roll of film on the next car. Remember, no auto exposure, no autofocus, no zoom lens, just a 35mm Nikon F with a motor drive that sounded like a machine gun and a 200mm lens. Like I said, my goal was to keep the bumper in focus on every single frame as the car came towards me and then drove past. I would then run home to my dark room that my dad had helped me build in the basement and develop the roll of film. Now, I never printed those photos, but I did go frame by frame with a magnifying loop to see how many were in tack sharp focus. 
and I kept a chart on my darkroom wall so that I could track my progress. Yeah, total geek. When I was 18, I won my first of several newspaper awards for newspaper sports photography. Fast forward, two weeks ago, I shot a fashion layout for a local designer and used the shoot as a backdrop to film an upcoming YouTube tutorial about speed lights. The fact is, I haven't worked with speed lights in about six years. So what did I do? For two full days prior to the shoot, I tested and shot a mannequin with speed lights to be sure that I was ready for whatever obstacles I might encounter during the shoot. If you're passionate about your work, if quality really matters, you practice. So okay, enough of my lecturing. The question you should be asking now is how? What's the best way to practice? Here are a few habits that I've developed throughout my career that have kept me in really good practice. Habit number one. I'll give you a quote from famous photographer Minor White. I am always mentally photographing everything as practice. I can honestly say that I make pictures every single day. Now indeed, at this point in my career, I'm not about to try and convince you that I'm pulling my Nikon DA10s out and walking around with them all day, every day. Heck no. I use this and I shoot TIFF files, which are 27 megabyte files that will make a beautiful 11 by 14 print right out of the camera if I want to hang them on a wall. Using this camera and taking photos all the time keeps me visually sharp. It's with me at all times, so I never have an excuse and it empowers me to look at the world in a creative way because I can capture my visions easily and with some degree of quality. Here are some recent images that I've made with my iPhone, just because they presented themselves not because I had to. Habit number two, simplify. If you've watched many of my videos, you've heard me say, kiss it. Keep it simple, stupid. Do you have a new lens? Maybe a new flash. For a month or so, make all your practice just about that piece of gear. This will force you to be creative in your problem solving because you're potentially limiting your visual options by using just one lens or your lighting options with just one flash. You know when you get in your car to drive somewhere? With very little thought, you put the key in the ignition or you push the start button and you begin driving. At this point, you're not thinking about how to drive. You're paying attention to the other traffic, concentrating on the directions or the words to your favorite song on the radio, but you are not trying to remember how the car works. Don't pick up a camera or a piece of lighting equipment and try to remember how things work. If you don't know your camera inside out and backwards, you'll be dividing your attention between your subject and your gear when you shoot. That's how you miss things and that's how you make mistakes. It's also worth noting that the guy with the newest or the most equipment is not necessarily the best photographer. In fact, it's usually completely opposite result. You've all heard the phrase, the best camera is the one that you have in your hand. <laughs> Habit number three, work your shot. Yeah, this video, watch it. Back in the film days, I had to mow lawns as a teenager to afford all that film. Today, digital memory cards can be deleted and reused over and over and over again. You have no excuse. Look at the images taken by your favorite photographers. Heck. Go to Google and search the phrase iconic photographs. Few if any of those photos are the result of one frame. They are the result of photographers shooting many frames and different exposures and different camera angles, some vertical, some horizontal. Make sure you exhaust every single possibility. That effort will not only yield better photographs, it will give you more experience. Understand that great photographs are not about exposure and lenses and lighting. Those are the tools that we use to solve problems. Great photographs come from capturing moments in a unique and interesting way. Eastman Kodak seized on that idea many years ago with the marketing phrase, Kodak moment. Life is all about experiences. We learn from each and every one of those experiences. Photographers have to build a visual database. It's that database in your mind that knows what will happen when you use direct flash. It's that database that understands your camera's light meter will cause you to underexpose a backlit scene. And the list goes on. You build that visual database by practicing and then practicing some more. If you want to be among the best, you keep on practicing and never stop. Another one of my teenage idols who is to this day a photographer that I admire, his name is David Hume Kennerly. 
He won a Pulitzer Prize for his photographs of the Vietnam War and was President Gerald R. Ford's personal White House photographer. As a 16-year-old, I got to see him photographing the president and wanted to grow up and have a career just like his. I mention him because I'm actually friends with him today on Facebook and follow him on Instagram. He still covers politics and his bylines can be seen all over the world. But guess what? He still practices. He lives in Santa Monica, California, and almost every day, except for when he's traveling, he goes for morning walks with his iPhone and posts some of the most amazing and creative images that you've ever seen. Even when he's on the road, his iPhone pictures keep coming. He has a Pulitzer and a host of other awards, an incredible career, and he still practices. Last but not least, habit number four, never stop learning. I don't. I love the fact that I learn new things each and every day from the comments in my videos and from my subscribers who are also members of my Facebook group. Learning something new is like getting a new piece of gear. It's a new tool that I have in my arsenal to solve problems with and make great photographs. I told you that you're already off to a great start with this habit because you're here on YouTube trying to learn. So what are you waiting for? After all, your best shot is your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios. Thanks for watching. If you find these videos helpful, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And if you've got a question that you'd like answered, post it in the comment section below. Your question could be my next video.